Hey, what's up, everyone? Morty Croson here, and today we're going to be breaking down Dylan Gabriel's throwing mechanics, and we're going to start the video right now. This is the newest edition of the performance lab. Reach your individual goals. You don't want to just talk about straight line speed. We also want to talk about your glitchy quick. We break down your video. Let's make you into the quarterback I know you can become. All right, so Dylan Gabriel definitely made a name for himself this weekend with a big win over Texas. Got a couple of people that were wondering what his throwing mechanics were like, wanting me to do a breakdown on him. And, and the big thing that stands out with Dylan Gabriel, obviously, is him being a left-handed quarterback. We don't see a lot of high-level left-handed quarterbacks in general. Um, you know, there's just been just a very few amount of them. I think he's a great college quarterback, but I don't know how well it's going to be transferred over into the NFL. And, and this is just going to go through the game this weekend. We'll just be going from the in order from the beginning of the game to the end. Uh, and so we could see here, this is an example of something where, you know, really not great mechanics, really not doing a great job shifting onto his front leg, really not a great decision here either with where to throw the ball. It might be a miscommunication. That receiver might needed might, might have needed to stay more on the outside part of the field or, you know, more towards the top of the numbers instead of coming all the way inwards. But I'm going to assume that that was just not a great uh, decision just based off of the responses from the receiver here here i, I like the uh the throw uh, i mean gr not great deep ball mechanics right really straight with that front leg really bringing that that left leg all the way around you could tell he definitely has a baseball background that's a very common baseball thing to do is bring that leg around and really stiffen that front leg a good amount he's still i mean it's not like he doesn't have arm strength it's just does he have the combination of arm strength and clean decision making I think that ends up making him a bit of a um, again uh, he's a really high level college quarterback I don't know how well it's going to be able to transfer over into the NFL so when looking at this here we'll see the ball kind of leaving his hands we got six two it's going to be the time here and the ball gets out probably about nine three right so another about 0 0.31 in terms of the release time really clean release time and this ball was a, uh, the best throw. This is the most impressive throw he made all day to me, right? I mean, you could maybe say the game winner was his best throw, but this is the most impressive throw. Okay, I think he gets off that back leg a little bit too early. I don't think he sits into that that back leg as well as you could. While he does do a good job of sitting into that back leg, so if there's a lot, there's a lot of young quarterbacks I'm sure that can watch this and see. Look at how well he is here. The, the fact that he is actually sitting into that back leg. Now, he's very quick to being able to get off of that back leg and not really generating as much rotation there and is creating a good amount of push, which is why he ends up needing to stiffen that front leg and comes around with that front leg and, and ends up really putting a lot more on his arm than he probably needs to. But the reality is he is driving off that back leg and he is using that rotational force to generate momentum. Here's a really good throw, right? See how this one, he has the baseball underneath him. I usually teach quarterbacks to do more of this where their foot's going more off to the side rather than really driving through. But notice how he gets that foot down and gets the ball right out of his hands and was really accurate too, right? There's a guy right on his face and then he has better mechanics with the guy coming at him in comparison to when he has a clean pocket being able to throw. So, you know, and that can say something about him as a overall competitor or quarterback, you know, being able to be potentially draftable and going to the next level. This ended up being a big drive, right? Those were a couple of plays there in what ended up being a, a drive where they could have actually scored, you know, had a, a guy drop the ball there late right before the end of the half, um, but still ended up taking, they, they drove all the way down the field, uh, kicked a field goal, got a three point lead. Then coming out of halftime, they went and, Drove down and ended up scoring there. So uh, now they ended up coming back and that's 20, 20, 27, 27. This is another great throw. Okay. I, I do think that at times he's not great at getting the ball out. He doesn't have great timing with the throws and, and takes a couple extra steps here. You know, like this is, a, um, I mean, it's the running man coverage, obviously, but this is pretty telegraphed, right? I mean, it, and and to me, a little bit late when the ball comes out of his hands, the ball comes in and is perfect with the location right and the accuracy and really even when the ball gets there i mean the tight end needed to be a little bit more aware when the ball's kind of, i don't know why he was like surprised by the ball coming great throw here again right i mean he does a lot of things really well and is great at being able to really handle the pressure right here's another 
play where the pocket ended up collapsing on him. He does a great job escaping when the pocket is collapsing. Does a great job of keeping his eyes downfield, finds the open receiver, and is able to complete it and get, get big yards there. And that's the big thing that I would say, too, for younger quarterbacks is you really want to understand how to work the pocket. You know, this is something that is... Uh, you know, really uh, harder to teach. I think, you know, you could probably set up drills and I'm, I'm sure they do set up drills like this uh, for a lot of the uh, quarterbacks that are, you know, at these bigger schools. But, you know, you still want to be able to understand like when this pocket is collapsing, I see so many guys that would just like run that way, right? They start to feel pressure and they just try to escape the tackles rather than being able to step up in the pocket and being able to find some space going forward and then be able to look downfield and find a open target. And he does a really, really good job of being able to work the pocket. That's probably his most impressive thing would be how well he's able to uh, really handle the rush and step up in the rush and, and make it so, um, you know, he, he doesn't take as many sacks, right? He, I saw him get out of sacks. There's one play that he, uh, I want to say it was a scoring drive and they, they ended up stopping Oklahoma on um, or sorry, then Texas stopped Oklahoma on their own like one. And then two or three plays later, Dylan Gabriel escaped and got probably like a 40 or 50 yard run. It was a pass play, but was able to escape the pocket and um, run for a, a really big gain. And it was like a big play, you know, like in, in the overall grand scheme of things, like, you know, that would could have still been a great opportunity for, Texas to be able to stop Oklahoma and be able to, you know, get good field position, but that basically flipped the field position. I don't know if they ended up scoring on that drive for sure, but I know that was a big play. This ended up being a pass interference. So they got the ball 15 yards up. And then to me, this was a great play call, right? They ended up going into man coverage and they blitzed that, that corner up at the top. And so they had basically man coverage and it uh, looked like it was a linebacker. Could have been a safety. Don't know for sure, but made the wrong choice. Easy touchdown. Again, the uh, pocket's collapsing in on him. Look, I mean, he keeps his eyes downfield. He's like, oh, shit. You know, like, I feel the, the pocket collapsing and was still able to get his eyes downfield and just get the ball out, and boom, touchdown. Great play. Great play. You know, so in terms of his throwing, I think that there's some things that he could do better from the lower body perspective. He might even be releasing the ball too. Like to me, there's sometimes where he releases the ball a little bit too early in terms of where it is in comparison to um, like the rest of his body. So he's like releasing the ball as his arms coming through um, instead of at getting the arm all the way through, then releasing it, get a little bit more of a wrist flick when you do that. But, you know, these are all very, very just small little detail things. And and while, you know, they're they're important to be able to, no matter what level you are, right, you want to be as effective as you can. Um, obviously, not everybody's going to have the same type of response to different things that may be uh, positive or negative within their uh, throwing mechanics. So, you know, for him, I, I think there's a lot of things that he does really well, again, handling pressure and being able to respond well to that and and really being able to have plenty of throwing power, plenty of throwing velocity, and really can make a lot of throws from, you know, 30 yards and under. Again, I, th I think he could work a little bit more on his ability to get the ball out of his hands and going through the reads or sometimes where I think he holds the ball a little bit too long, right? Instead of just getting the ball out of his hands, like right here, you know, he's taking a couple extra hitches before he finally gets rid of the ball, uh, makes it so sometimes the corners are a little bit closer to the receiver when they they actually catch it but you know like we saw a couple of throws with Cameron Ward uh, about a week ago where he does a really good job of being able to throw the ball even before the receiver is getting out of his break where it seems like Dylan Gabriel is a little bit slower to get the ball out of his hands and uh, while that will work in uh, division one that doesn't work the same when it comes to the NFL you got to make decisions you got to make them fast because those windows really tighten up really quickly uh, and then you also can't rely as much as on your arm strength. I mean, obviously, you do have to have a really strong arm, right? These guys that, that play in the NFL have amongst the strongest arms, but you have to be very, very gifted. You know, Patrick Mahomes, Josh, uh, Josh Allen, you know, these guys that just have these cannons are on a whole nother level than, you know, Dylan Gabriel. Dylan Gabriel does have a really strong arm, but it's not like, you know, those guys. Those guys are very elite when it comes to their arm strength and ability to, to you know, put a lot on the throw. So, uh, yeah, as always, guys, if you like the information, go and click that thumbs up down below, subscribe to the channel. I'm sure I'm going to get a lot of people that are, you know, not necessarily uh, big fans of the, the maybe assessment of Dylan Gabriel, but would love to hear your feedback. If you have any 
recommendations. We'd love to hear that as well. You guys could check out the description to learn a little bit more about what we do with our online programs, help you with your really big focus is on throwing power and ability to throw the ball further. I always tell people like when I was playing, I had a quarterback coach and I, I wish we just put a little bit more focus on how far we could, I could throw the ball and how much power I could throw on the ball. He did a great job at helping me with the footwork and my eyes and you know where to go with the football and, and getting the ball out of my hands quickly and, and using my body, especially when it comes to throwing the ball, you know, 30 yards or under, but it's a different type of throw when you're throwing the ball deep and, and understanding your footwork and, and getting your footwork down and really getting the video tutorials of what it's going to take you to be able to improve your throwing mechanics and make it specific to you, I think really helps and makes a big difference in your, the, the quarterback's ability to uh, actually understand it and be able to apply it. So uh, yeah, check out the description in order to find out a little bit more about that. Thanks for watching. We'll talk to you soon.